All right, welcome to the, well, this is the 10th episode of This Is Best, the third in our ISO series. Today I have a fantastic character who's a little bit different from our usual group of characters that we have, more akin to our first one and Mr. Graham Hawkins. I would like to welcome to the show the one and only Stuart Little. Stuart, how are you doing today? I'm very well. In fact, the sun is shining. It's been raining like hell for the last few days, which has been great because we needed the water. But um, it's, it's a beautiful day here in New Zealand. So yeah, thank you. Well, I say that you're my first New Zealand-based guest, which is which is phenomenal. And me being from Wellington, and obviously people can pick up on my Irish <laughs> accent. We have one Kiwi who's not in the country, and one Englishman who's now in the country. So it's great to have have that, <laughs> yeah. like that. So, well, uh, you know. so before we get into the, uh, get into everything, uh, would like to know a bit more about you. So, why don't you run through what you're doing currently with Agency Eight, and also your background, and and give the viewers an understanding as to what you do. Yep. Okay. Thanks for that. So, well, hello everybody. Um, I'm I'm Stuart Little. I've, I've Agency Eight is my business. Um, it's a new, relatively new business, um, and it's been born out of a, a kind of a deep passion I have for for kind of delivering things in a digital manner, but also using social media as kind of a, a mechanism for that. So, just a bit of history, I guess. I've come from the sales background, um, predominantly in corporate world uh, for the past 12 years or so here in New Zealand, and um, in the IT industry prior to that in the UK. But uh, I've I've kind of taken this opportunity of you know, in six last six months or so to kind of to start Agency Eight and and be there for businesses who are looking to actually embrace um, how digital can make a massive difference for them. Uh, certainly been my focus. Um, so with that in mind, we have a lot of people that we're watching this will kind of have a similar ideal of Stu's background with um, Graham Hawkins, who I mentioned earlier, with the same. Yep, for sure. How he's doing. What I would like to try to try to quickly before we do get into the BS side of things is is get your take on the nature of traditional outreach for the new steps. You mentioned the LinkedIn side of things. Yeah. What we're curious on is is what do you see as the biggest difference right now between the traditional outreach element comparative to the new style that we're seeing with yeah. not really COVID, but like the nature the nature of the digital revolution yeah I look I, I think that it's, it comes to I mean evolution of businesses is one thing you know where they how they've got to actually interact with their customer is the most important thing you've got to look at how your customer behaves and then you behave accordingly if your customer is looking for digital engagement which most are because we all carry mobile phones and have digital devices and we're engaged in that way if that's where your ideal clients are then you kind of have to be in that space and doing that job accordingly and doing a good job of that I think you know their their expectations have changed as well you know even even though that have been in the in the business a long time are having to really adapt to how this digital component is showing up so therefore you know if you're not embracing that you're missing out because what's happening is if you're still trying to and, and look there's space for cold calling right there's space for that there's space for email there's space for all of these things but ultimately they're not the boom side of what's happening these aren't the growth side in my humble opinion there's i, I see that actually the digital is where the favored engagement is and i think if covid scenario has taught us anything is that you know it's shown the cracks and the holes in digital transformations journeys for a lot of businesses but what it's also shown is that sales can be done in a different way um, this kind of conversation is is very familiar to everybody now who's in a business and and understands that either they're taking care of their people or they're taking care of their customers via these type of channels because that's what's been enforced on everybody right so we we're, we're learning to live with that and i think that it's been it's been the ultimate proof of concept that's how i've worded it you know it's been this this moment where we've all had to kind of think differently and that's interesting because i kind of feel like i live in that space of thinking differently a bit so you know i it's it to be honest and I, I, it's kind of a weird thing to say but I, you know the COVID thing's probably been a blessing in, in for some people because it's just I look at it and go, wow, how have I, how, you know, my message is now much easier to translate because people have got a reality of what this is all about. Previously, it was, it was challenging to do that because, you know, people were constantly in a cycle of understanding that their day to day was what was important for them. And, you know, yeah, I'll get to my LinkedIn or yeah, I'll get to my digital or yeah, I, I don't really like doing Zoom because I don't want to be on camera. Whereas now, kind of like there's a reality of being on camera and the, 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 the resources that are available there, I mean, without things like Zoom as a, or Teams or whatever your flavor is, you know, I've been using StreamYard and things like that, for example, but when you've, when you've used those, you can't find out how easy they are, how engaging they are, and what you can actually do with them that makes a little bit of different um, 
to your business. It makes your business feel different, you know? So yeah, well, I'd be lost without it. So I, I don't know, I don't know how others work. I'm gonna to move to the first uh, BS that you've got. For those who haven't seen this before, we bring up three BS points from our lovely guest and that we also talk about how we go about improving <clears throat> those particular points. So let's go on to the first one, Stu. What have we got as our first BS today? Yep, so look, I've been helping a lot of people um, a with their profiles because that's a that's a that's a passion of mine and i you know I, I feel i can add huge value in respect of how people are showing up because they're if they're missing elements in that profile i can quickly feel that and, and make them look more appealing and give them confidence in areas where they're not perhaps seeing it but the fact is what, I, what i'm also seeing unfortunately as a result of the activity right now is that companies are not exiting people out of their businesses perhaps how they could and I say that in a case of self-preservation, because if businesses are simply dumping people, um, and I say that in, in its literal sense, because I've seen, I've actually spoken to people who've been text messaged to say, you know, there's no longer a role with you. And there's really little or no follow up with that. And, and there are other, are, are other examples where people have, are taken through a process and they're, you know, they're correctly exited out. But I think that that moment of, of, you know, like if you've been in a business for a period of time, then there should be this moment where you're respected for the work you've done and then taken out of the business in a way that allows you to um, be best prepared for the next step that you want to take. It really shouldn't be, you know, kind of this moment where you feel that you're that that you've you're lost, you're losing. You know, like this situation is inevitable for a lot of businesses, and they're going to do that. But I think the best way of them showing who they are and 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 really, if they've got any values and they live to the values that they that they talk to for their to gain customers and to retain customers. Then they then it should be the same for their people, <laughs> and maybe investing in in a in a how do we do things differently for this all, to make sure they do they leave the business in a clear concise way. What I like to look at it as is they high five people on the way out, right? So they you know they 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 love the experience of leaving so much that they'll go and talk about it in 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 which in in real terms boost the business that they've come from because if what you do is the alternative and you just kick people to the curb what you get is this terrible brand um backlash as a result because that person will go and talk to way more people about their bad experience and more likely you know it's just not going to be a good outcome for anybody so yeah, i think I'm, you've got to be mindful of that i'm, I'm curious on that one because I, I i'm there's a couple of points that i think raises from this and this is actually, if you look back at the Rebecca Powell conversation I had a few weeks back, which talked about the nature of people being bad and ISO and stuff like that. What I would be curious on, you talk about the point of, um, you know, people text messaging and stuff like this. Yeah. This, this, the motivation behind it is my curiosity. Do you think it's down to a sense of, um, you know, expediting this process because they've got a lot more people to let go? Is it the case that it's just laziness and then it's like, this is the easiest way to do it? Or do you think it's down to a fear of, talking to these people and telling them why they're letting them go like that face to face what do you think it is and look it, it could be a combination like there may there may be elements of that and i think it depends on the personal scenario for the for the business of how the business is actually tracking in this and how you know not nobody was genuinely prepared for this no one really saw it coming but it's you know like a case of you know how the business has worked as a result and i know that you know look for the owners and for the for the leadership teams this has not been an easy ride either i'm not not suggesting that these guys are going wow you know this is a great opportunity for us let's now empty the empty uh, drain the swamp of all the people that we don't need let's, let's get let's get rid of it but it's what i'm saying is um i think that uh if it, the, the opportunity is the opportunity, right? You know, like irrespective of the situation that you find yourself in, it's kind of like, how would you like to be treated as a human? Now, if you've got to let, you, if your business is shutting down, that's a real moment for the people responsible for that and who are, who are managing that situation. But that doesn't mean that they've got to be, you know, really um, poor in the way that they execute with the people that have been loyal to that business to build it when it was successful. You know, like that's the piece I guess I got to get my head around, and that's why I'd like to see a bit more of that. Um, people just actually saying, "No, look, you know, we've got to take time for this because it's really important." Because what happens is it's the knock-on of how it affects the people. Because, like I say, I've spoken to a number of um, individuals over recent times, and again, my wife has, who's a photographer, and she's doing similar stuff in helping people kind of get stood back up. But what we're noticing is that those that haven't taken